Hi, Hugh Taylor here coming to you once again from my messy home office with the second installment of our popular public relations do's and don'ts video series. I guess it gets to be a series when you're in your second video. Today's video is about setting realistic expectations for a public relations project. And I'm going to apologize in advance if some of this is going to come off as a bit negative. I want you to succeed. I also want to maintain my own sanity. And I will tell you that over the last five years, having done over 3,000 press releases for clients in 66 countries, I have had almost every imaginable conversation about what you can get out of a press release or distribution or media outreach. And I want to help you be successful by un having you better understand what you can accomplish with public relations and what might be unrealistic, or at least how to set practical and effective goals for what you're doing in the current moment. So my first, and, I, and I'm going to start, last time I did this video with the do followed by a don't. I'm going to do it the other way around. This time, with a don't followed by what you should do. So number one, don't overestimate the appeal of your news. And what I'm talking about here is an expectation that your news or your story is going to get major media coverage. I see this a lot, especially in cryptocurrencies, where people contact me and they say, we have a new coin coming out. We want to be in the Wall Street Journal. We want to be on you know, major broadcasting, cable outlets, financial news, and so forth. And what I tell people is, at a minimum, I can't do that for you. I'm not set up for that. There are public relations firms that might be able to help you with that. They probably charge a lot more than we do at Comms Factory, and they're probably worth it. But in terms of realism, I can't get you on the Wall Street Journal with a new coin announcement. Because think you have to think about it like this. Getting news attention is similar to getting any other kind of attention as a business, getting attention in the marketplace, finding new customers, differentiating from competitors. And in the example of cryptocurrency and in almost every business category, there's a lot of companies trying to get major media attention. Take a look at the Wall Street Journal. What do they normally write about? What do they cover on a day-to-day -day basis? Do they write about new coin announcements? Almost never. So the idea that your coin is so special that you're going to get covered in the Wall Street Journal is an unrealistic, unrealistic expectation, especially if you look at it in the context of the stories that these outlets normally, normally cover. And part of this also is to differentiate what I would call helpful news coverage from vanity coverage. And this is an issue that comes up even, I've seen it in, in large corporations where I've worked where somebody might want like a flattering news story about them or the company in a major outlet, which makes them look good, but it doesn't really help the business. You know, for example, when I was at Microsoft, someone said, I want to get the, I want to have an article about Microsoft Office in the New York Times. And I'd say, okay, that's great. But is that really going to help sell Microsoft Office? It might be better to get a story in PC World magazine. That's going to help sell the product. Not as sexy as the New York Times, but more effective. So what I would say, do establish realistic, meaningful coverage goals, meaning understand where getting media coverage is going to help your business and where it's going to be achievable, you know, with reasonable public relations effort and budget. Number two, don't misunderstand the reporter's job. This is, these are all related, you'll see, um, in terms of establishing expectations. Understand what business the reporter is in. I have a news reporter in this incredible stock photo. I don't know if she's really a news reporter. She might be a model just dressed up as a news reporter, but you kind of get the idea. This is a serious person. She has a career. She's trying to get ahead. She has a job to do. What is her job? Her job is not to report on you. Maybe you'll fit into something she wants to do. The reporter's job is to either come up with or come up with stories and report on them in a way that's going to be really interesting and help the media outlet make money through advertising. 
you know, that might mean breaking an interesting news story, you know, coming up with an interesting angle on an important issue in the, in the public sphere, reporting on an interesting trend or something fun or, or just kind of fascinating, probably not something that you're going to be offering. Now, if you can, then you find a fit. But that's what the reporter is trying to do. The reporter is trying to advance his or her career, uh, or at least, you know, do a good job. You have to understand where you fit in with this. And the good news is there often is a fit. So, for example, let's say the report, there's, I'm just working on a project with this right now. There are a lot of reporters who cover uh, the public policy and rights for people with disabilities. It's a, it's a major, you know, reporting category. There's hundreds of reporters who write about disability. So my client is a, is a company that makes a device that helps people with disabilities use mobile phones. Okay. So how do I present that to reporters? I did not say here, here's a device that helps people use mobile phones if they're disabled. Now that is sort of interesting. But reporters don't like to just plug businesses. They're not in that. That's not their job. However, what I was able to do is say the, the person who founded this company is an expert. He can talk about how technology can help people with disabilities. And what my message to reporters is, if you are writing about the role of technology in helping people with disabilities, my I have an expert source for you. Perhaps you'd like to talk to him. And that resulted in... A reporter saying, oh, that's interesting. I want to talk to this person. Or, okay, so we found a fit. My client will help the reporter do his job better. That's what you want to achieve. Number three, don't diverge from your business strategy. This is a really significant point. And I understand, you know, the, if you're watching this video, if you're talking to me, you probably don't know a lot about public relations. And that's fine. Why would you know about public relations? But there's a, it's if you want to have success in public relations, it's important to understand what you can do and, and where it fits into your business strategy. And I see this a lot where people come to me and they say, I want to get, I want to do some PR, I want to do a press release, I want to get in the news. And the question I have is basically why? And I'm not trying to be obnoxious, but I, I want to know what you're trying to achieve in business terms, because then I can figure out how to be successful for you. What is, what is your business strategy and how does PR fit into it? So I'll give you a simple example. You know, let's say you have a local business like a tire shop or something. You know, so your business strategy might be, you know, use search engine optimization to get people to find you and book an appointment for new tires in your car. Okay. That's your business strategy. You want to build your business through client acquisition in local marketing. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. So how does PR fit in? Now, of course, the first question to ask is, does PR fit in? Because I like to be in the success business. I believe, I don't want to, maybe I'm the only, I don't want to take your money and do PR if it's not going to help, because that's not going to help me build a relationship with you. That'll probably just end up, you know, with everybody being disappointed. So, you know, if in the case of the tire comp, tire shop, I would say, okay, so let's do a local, localized press release with some local SEO, like a Google map link embedded and key phrases like the best tire shop in, in our town or whatever, help with searchability. And then we can also, you know, do media outreach. So find out what the newspaper radio station website is for your local area and then try and contact them and try and get them interested. And then the PR is supporting this business strategy of, you know, generate new customers through SEO and you're in business. And this, this is what, how you align your, your PR with, with, with your business, because the, the alternative and this come, we get this kind of request is like, Oh, you know, I want to be, I want to get in the news. So the question is, you know, if you if you can get in the news, but if it doesn't help your business, if you're not really achieving anything, I mean, it doesn't. There's an idea that you know all news is good news, and you know, oh, you get your name in print. That help. It does. You're that's correct. It doesn't hurt, but it doesn't it may not really drive your business strategy forward. So if you're gonna, you know, if you're if you're gonna spend 10% of your marketing budget on PR, 
make sure that money is is being spent in the right way anyway so we are here to help we have a an ebook that goes into some of these issues in more depth it's called stop being invisible the abcs of public of pitching and public relations you can download it at the link below we'd love to work with you we're here to answer your questions you can ask, ask us questions on the website we'll get back to you come visit us at commsfactory.net look forward to hearing from you